I'm telling you what, it's, uh, I wouldn't take nothing for it in the world. And, uh, and, and tonight we're going get to into, get into some things. And Pastor, I thank you for, for having us tonight. And uh, we got people taking care of our service tonight. So, um, amen. If you want to see our building and all that, you can look us up on YouTube. Praise God. So you can, uh, you can just punch in River of Life Lafayette on YouTube and all of our services are on that. And so um, we don't got the camera work like we do here at the home church. Amen. But uh, you can still hear what's going on. At least you can hear it. So, and and then uh, you know you can't. We don't have nobody working the camera. So, you know, whenever I keep on walking, there's nobody to follow me, and you just hear me talking instead of. So maybe we can work on that. Praise God, it's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't see. Doctor Jerry talking about tithing offering. Doctor Jerry Savelle said something the other night that um, it's something you should know, but you know there's things you just that all of a sudden you've heard probably heard it, but it didn't. It didn't ring a bell. This ain't got nothing to do with my message tonight, by the way. But, but going along with, you know, I, we, we walk a lot of times as Christians and we're sitting there and we're, at, we're saying, how can I afford this? You know, you ever walked in? How many up here you've done that? You said, man, I like that house. I don't know if I can afford it or not. Man, I like that car. I just don't know if I can afford it or not. And, and Dr. Savell was saying, you know, it's when God spoke to him about uh, start, start believing me for an airplane. And he says, well, Lord, I, I can't pay for that. And most profound words from the Lord said, I didn't ask you to pay for it, I asked you to believe for it. Amen. 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 Now, whenever you start thinking like that, God didn't ask us to pay. He didn't, in here, look at his word. He didn't ask us to pay. He asked us to believe, didn't he? Amen. He'll take care of that. If we'll believe, he'll take care of the rest for us. Amen. So that has changed my total way of thinking. Amen. I no longer, I no longer think I can't have something. Amen. Just because it might cost too much. Why? Because he's the God of more than enough. Praise God. Just think, the, the, the streets of gold. I mean, we, we, we talk about gold down here. You know, we, the value of gold. Well, man, it's a pavement up in heaven. Praise God. And we think he can't supply our needs. I'm saying, we serve a big God today. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I got a, I got a great story for you. A little lady that's been coming to our church for... Uh, for a few years now, she came out of a, a, a denomination, a, a denominational church. Won't name the denomination, but they—I mean, she had some mess up thinking when she started coming to our church. And she's actually the mother of, of someone that comes to our church. She started coming. They got her talking, got her coming to our church. And uh, th just to show you one 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 example, Pastor of, of uh, the, uh, the glory of God, she came in when she first started coming to our church. She came rolling in in a wheelchair. She's not in a wheelchair no more. All right? Praise God. And I'm telling you what, it's this, this lady, she made the statement uh, a few, uh, uh, last year or so ago, sitting under the teaching of the Word of God. She said, I'm telling you what, she goes, God has rewired my thinking. And I said, that's a great analogy right there. God has rewired my, she goes, God has rewired my mind. That's how she said it. God has rewired my mind. And I'm telling you, she got a hold in the funny story we just got through saying our confession. She said, Pastor, she, I gave her, let her give her testimony this morning. She said, since I've been coming here, she goes, I didn't believe in tithing. She goes, I'd get so, she goes, you'd do that tithing confession? She goes, and I wasn't going to say it because I didn't believe in it. And uh, she wouldn't. And uh, so she said that, uh, uh, she said, the church, she goes, I got so mad. She goes, well, y'all do that tithing confession. She goes, and then you taught out of Malachi chapter 3 one morning when you were getting ready to receive the tithes and offerings. And I normally don't. I just, you know, I get up. I, I'm like Pastor Allen. I, I, don't, I don't got all these sermonettes and all that to receive tithes. I just like, okay, get your tithe out, you know. You know, so, uh, you know, I'm one of those type, type of deals. And so um, just that morning, the Lord impressed upon me to read Malachi chapter 3. We began to read Malachi, kind of taught on it just a little bit. And uh, she said, all of a sudden, it became a rhema word to her. She goes, I got so mad. She goes, because the church, I, because what happened was the church she was going to reversed that scripture around that you weren't supposed to. I said, well, how do you, how do you even reverse that around reading it? I mean, I know we say school messes things. You know, you got to go to school to mess that up, that verse up. But how do you even mess that up? But the the script that the the church in in return basically taught. No, you give, your, you give your money to the pastor and his family. You don't give it to the church. And so 
So she, she was brought up in this. The pastors lived off everything. This particular church took a percentage. You didn't give 10% voluntary to God. They took a percentage of your paycheck. <laughs> messed up stuff. Some messed up stuff. And she said, whenever you read that, Malachi chapter 3, she was, I got so mad. She was, when I realized I have been robbing God and that I have been missing out on this blessing. And she's a tither now. Praise God. Because she got a hold of the rest. God is blessing this little lady. I'm telling you what, I, it just excites us to watch what God's doing. Uh, and, and, and all of our people, and, you know, God sent us, when God sent us to Lafayette, and I want to say this right here and then we'll, we'll get into the word. When God sent us to Lafayette, I'll never forget it. We were praying about it. Um, and, and we went, we prayed for three years in Lafayette. I didn't teach, I didn't preach. All we did was have prayer, pray over the city. For three solid years we were at the uh, recreation center they were allowed they were so gracious to let us use a room there and uh, we prayed for three solid years and I'm talking about we pulled strongholds down you know everything no preaching teaching just praying and we began to watch God move and then sure enough the time came to send us out and uh, I'll never forget it I'm probably like any other pastor well first place we got God had favor on us and we we got to, uh, for a solid year, we were at the skating rink out there in Lafayette, so we had church right there in the middle of the skating rink, you know? And I remember setting the chairs up, and, and uh, I'd always, I started out setting 50 chairs out. I had a vision, I said, I'm, we're going to see 50 people, amen? So I had a vision of that. And uh, I'll never forget, you think, they did a front page article on us in the, in the Lafayette paper. We were on the front page, man, Terry and I's little picture, you know? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, surely, I said, when everybody reads this, man, they're going to think, oh, we've got to go to that church. You know, and I'm thinking this in my head, you know. And I'm thinking Sunday morning, I'm going to have to pull more chairs out because the place is going to be running over, you know. Well, needless to say, if it hadn't been for a few of our people coming from here to our service, it wouldn't have been that many people there that, on our first service. And I thought, what happened? But I remember reading, I remember reading from a minister, he said, they were meeting in a YMCA, and he said, I would go to the door every day. He goes, and I'd look out the window, and I'd just call them in. I'd just begin to call the people. Well, the Lord placed upon my heart Acts chapter 13, 44. On the next Sabbath day, I believe it's the, I, can't, I think it's the message translation says this, but on the next Sabbath day, practically the whole city came to hear the word of God preached. And so that was the verse God gave me. I've been confessing it ever since. Every Sunday, Amen. I'm, I'm quoting on the next Sabbath day, Acts 13, 44. On the next Sabbath day, practically the whole city came to hear the word of God preached. And I believe they're coming in. They're coming in. We call them in from the north, south, east, and west of our area. We've got 12 cities set up that we've targeted, amen, that we're praying over and call them in from those cities and those counties. And, and they're coming in. And I'm telling you what. You know, about a year ago when, when Elaine uh, laid hands on us here and she even called us out to choo-choo and prophesied over Carrie and I and about the, the miracles that were going to begin happening in the ministry and happening in Lafayette. And then everybody knows last year when Tracy was here, he just put the icing on the cake right over here. Praise God. And we've never been the same since. I can't even imitate how what happened, you know. I can't even try to imitate what happened that night. But I can tell you this, we've been having, since that day, there's been anointing on our life, Pastor, that, that we've been having miracle service, people getting healed, delivered, and set free. It's not unusual. It's just not a, you know, a lot of people go, man, we just had an unusual service. No, it's a, it's a usual service for us, praise God. So it's not unusual for us to see people getting, you know, to be healed and delivered and set free and followed out in the Holy Ghost, amen, praise God. And it may be to the visitors that come, it may shock them a little bit they get a shock you know a shock and all but amen I, it's 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 just a usual service to us so i've been preaching at our church about passion and it's kind of go along with what elaine kind of brought out but i've been i've been preaching this i don't know for about about six weeks now i guess and i was praying and, and i was really praying i was like i know god's just gonna give me something different for tonight you know and, and i was praying that you know Lord, just, I want a now word. And he says, well, this is your now word, what you've been preaching. This is what I got you on. So this is what I want you to bring to him, praise God. And I said, all right, praise God, we're going to do it. Hallelujah. 
So I want to talk about, I've been uh, ministering on renewing your passion for Jesus. Renewing your passion for Jesus. Especially these last days that we've been living, the last days that we're living in now, we have what, you know, the Bible says this, that in the last days, we know these scriptures, in the last days, many will depart from the faith. Now, when it says they shall depart from the faith, I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, <laughs> I came out of the denominational church, and I, and I remember one of the scriptures brought up to me, well, you know, the Bible says some will depart from the faith. That's not what it's talking about. It don't mean you're going to depart from the Baptist faith or the Methodist faith or, uh, you know, the, the Word of Faith faith. <laughs> It's talking about the faith in Jesus, but he's going to depart from that. And today, Pastor, I'm concerned. I, I, you see that happening. People that we know, and y'all preach this, people that we know, people that's been elders, people that's been deacons, people that's been in praise and worship, even ministers that we saw that for, for many years back, not many years back, just a few years back, were on fire for God. I mean, white hot fire for God and and. and they're, you don't see them in church. They're not even going to church. Some of them aren't anymore. What happened to them? You're right, John. Where, where are they now? And I remember when, when God, one of the things when God sent us to Lafette, and I didn't understand this scripture, and God gave me uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, and it's talking about woe be unto the pastors who scattered my flock. And, and uh, you know, when I first read that, this is before we even started praying, I didn't understand that scripture at all. And, and God began to bring that scripture out to me. And um, well, can I read it to you real quick? Amen. Praise God before I go any further. This will, this will help some of you. Pastors, you'll love this too. If you, I'm sure you already know it. But. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 23. And, and watch this. Now, I had no idea what this scripture meant. Didn't know anything about it. I just know God gave me the scripture. It says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, says the Lord. Now, I know we're talking about here, he's talking about the house of Israel and, and all that, but God put this in a, in, a, in a perspective for me. Therefore, as thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. Now, I started reading that, and that was kind of tripping me out a little bit. You know, I didn't... I don't, I don't get it, God. I don't understand it. I didn't know when God sent us to the Fed, I didn't know there were several, pastors, several, when I say this, several pastors that had gotten into sin. There was people, I didn't know none of this now, there was people who, who were hurt by uh, pastors. There were people who were uh, stabbed in the back by, by congregations. And many people, you would not believe, hundreds of Possibly even a, even a couple of thousand people don't even go to church no more because of this big outbreak that happened. I didn't know none of this happened because of this big outbreak that happened just there in Lafayette, Georgia. One, one, one great church there that was going strong, the pastor had an adulterous affair. One pastor was taking, was taking uh, uh, elder, boards of the elders, the, the men. They'd go on fishing trips and have beer and all that stuff. I didn't know none of this was going on. And, and then lo and behold, I kept on reading, and God says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them again to their foes. They shall be fruitful and increase. Praise God. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall, neither shall they be lacking says the Lord. Praise God. Now that's something to shout about right there. Praise God. They'll never be lacking anymore. Praise God. And I'm telling you what, in this new year, God's give uh, Carrie, a, God's give Carrie a, a word, having no fear in the new year uh, that she's been teaching on. Praise God. And I think Brother Copeland has been teaching on that. And our people's just getting so fired up. Amen. So I've been getting concerned and have been concerned over the years about people's passion even in our church and I even began looking pastor even at my own life you know am I as hot as I was the day I was born am I as hot as I was when the days when we was up here in praise and worship you know and I'm doing this number here all, you know all over the place you know am I that passionate 
Amen. I'm still, I'm like Pastor Allen, praise God. Somebody says, well, you know, that fire one day, will it'll burn out one. No, it's not burned out, praise God. But I, I like going back and doing a checkup on me. Am I still on fire like I was? You know, you hear people talk about the, hey, praise God, you know, amen, things ain't like they used to be. And you hear, well, River of Life isn't as hot as it used to be. You know, well, you need to go back and check because the church is still here. Where are you? Amen. The church is still hot. I love it. Don't you think it's odd whenever, well, it's not odd, but don't you think it's funny? I, I know uh, while we were you know, still here in, in pastoral care and all that, we would have visitors come in, and, and you would hear these same people, you'd hear kind of, well, well, it, man, it just ain't the same as it used to be. But yet we'd have visitors come in and go, man, this is the hottest thing going I've ever saw in my life. So that kind of lets you do a little gauge check right there, don't it? If we've got new people coming in going, man, this is the best thing I saw. Man, this is, a, this is the church, man. This thing's hot. River of life is hot on fire, man. And, and we got another section over here going, well, it just ain't like it used to be. I think what has happened is it's, you're not like you used to be. You've lost your passion for Christ. You've lost your first love. And that's what we find here in, in, in Revelations 2, chapter 4. Revelations 2, chapter 4 says, Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. You have left your first love. Now, before, you, before everybody, you know, starts throwing darts and all that, well, man, I thought he was going to come in here and do a tiptoe through the tulips message for us, you know. We thought you was going to go up there and put on a comedy show for us. No. We come to bring the word tonight, amen. And if God wants me to be funny, I'll be funny sometimes, amen, praise God. But when it's time to be serious, time to be serious. Praise God. I hope y'all take me seriously. <laughs> Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. Your first love, not, not talking about left your wife. I love Carrie with all my heart. Amen. I love her with all my heart. I love my children. You know, but I love Jesus more. Why? Carrie's not the one that delivered me from drugs and alcohol. Carrie's isn't the one that pulled me out of the occult. Carrie's not the one that picked me up when I had overdosed twice on cocaine. <laughs> but it was the Lord Jesus Christ that led me. Y'all didn't know that about me, did you? <laughs> but that's part of my testimony, praise God. That's the power of God. I, and I remember, I remember so vivid the day I, I got myself right with the Lord, man, and, and uh, I gave my heart to Jesus, and I won't ever forget uh, you know, when I, I was in a secular band, and, and uh, I remember we were, I was drugged out, and I remember hearing, you know, Highway to Hell. Everybody knows ACDC. We used to sing the song, you know. It was so fun singing Highway to Hell. And, uh, you know, and I remember, I remember in this instance, I remember God coming to me and saying, that's exactly where you're headed. Well, man, I'm telling you what, Sunday morning came. And I, 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 I got up in and, and from what, what clothes I could put on. Man, I went to church, and I walked down to, the pastor was, the pastor was still preaching. And it was a pastor that was preaching my grandfather's funeral that day, amen, the, uh, Pastor Berman Cade. And I remember, man, I walked down, and I hit the altar, man. Back then, they had those old-fashioned, you know, the old-fashioned wooden altars down there, man. And, and one of them kind you can, one of them kind you can grab a hold of and put your arms around and hang on to. And man, you're giving your heart to Jesus. And I remember my life being changed that day. And, and so, Carrie didn't pull me out all that. Jesus did. He's my first love tonight. And he says right here that, that you have lost your, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. And, and people have allowed the world to come in, the things of the world, have come in and pull us away. A lot of people aren't in church tonight. Can I say this? And, and nobody throw nothing at me? Everybody's watching the football games tonight when they ought to be in, in the church. Now, the reason I'm not watching no football game tonight is because I'm fasting television. No. I wouldn't be watching anyhow. I'd be in the house of God tonight in the first place. Amen. And I always loved it. Because I always loved it because God always tested me because we would have a uh, back when they had the national championships on the, it was on the first of the year. Well, we're in here, and Elaine's preaching, you know. 
And you know what that means? We ain't getting out in time to see the national championship. <laughs> and, and, and I'll never forget, I'll never forget going to, when we'd go up to Wartburg Prison all the time, man. Uh, uh, my night to go always happened when Tennessee and, and Florida played. You know, I didn't get to see my Gators stomp on Tennessee. You know, back in the day. Now, I ain't got nothing to talk about right now, okay? We've got a new website up, Fire Will Must Champ now, instead of, you know, but getting all that. You've left your first love. And then in Revelations chapter 3, verse 15, says, I know your works, that you're neither cold. Oh, man, we don't like this one now. Because, you know, we're faith people. So we don't like these scriptures like this when it starts hitting home. I know your works that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, these aren't good words. He says, I'll spew you out of my mind. But you know what? Red letters. Red letters in your Bible. So I want you to take just a, as we're sitting here tonight, and I just read these two verses to you, just, I want you just to digest those just a little bit. And think about those two scriptures. Are you hot tonight? Are you hot tonight? Are, are, are you a witness for him tonight? I was given the illustration this morning, and, and I love doing this. I've got real bold now, and so I love doing this. I, I was at a gas station one time, and, and uh, uh, we had gotten out of church, and, you know, here at River Life, we had our, we had our, oh, by the way, I did this for Elaine. <laughs> she didn't want me wearing my holy pants, you know. And, uh, but she was just kidding, okay. I, I was just receiving the anointing, you know. And she was just picking on me that night. But, you know, when, when she's sitting there walking with you, you just, it's just a transfer going on, praise God. I'm just receiving, amen. So, so that's all that's all about. She's just picking on me while the transfer is going on. But I remember being at the, at the gas pump, and, and I was pumping gas, had on my, you know, got out of church. You can tell you got out of church. You got a suit on. It's Sunday. Bible's laying on the dashboard. And, and, uh, and uh, a dude comes up, you know, and he's kind of, you know, looking around. He'd been at church, too. I ain't got one with me. But, but uh, he's got a, yeah, you already knew what it was, didn't you? He's got a little track with him. And he walks up to me and says, sir, I'd like to give this to you for you to read. You know, it's a little, little one of those chick tracks, you know. It's, you know, talks about, you know, dying, going to hell if you, where would you die, go if you died right now. And, and it just so happened, it just so happened, I was like, and on the inside, I didn't say this to him, on the inside, I said, you coward. That sounds mean, but you'll get what I'm talking about. Over here. Over here on the side, now I'm not, I'm not saying this just because of the way they're dressed, but over here was a motorcycle group with angels of death or something on their, on their back, on their vest. And I'm like, uh, why don't you walk over to this group over here and hand them that track? Why do you want to hand it to a guy standing in a suit that you know's been to church? And I'm thinking, why don't, why don't you just walk over there and hand it to the, those guys right over there, man? You know? put it back in his little pocket and, and got back in his car. And he didn't go, but I'm talking about being bold, man, walking up and, and being bold, being like pastor, you know, walking when he, when he was uh, going down, where would you used to jog at all the time? The, the, the levee, yeah, the levee. I like those levee stories, and he'd meet the Jehovah Witnesses all the time. And he'd just, you know, when he walked up to him, you know, be standing right in front of him, just, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Amen. How awesome is that? That's called both. That's being white hot, by the way. That's being on fire for God. Amen? So I want to look at a few things. What would cause us? What are some things that would cause us to lose our passion? So let's, let's take a, a few things right here. Why people lose their fashion. Or, or their fashion. Yeah. That'd go good, too, why people lose their passion. Because of Hollywood. That's why. <laughs> Now, that's a message right there. Why do you lose your fashion? But, but watch right here. Here's why some people lose their, lose their passion. By allowing something precious to become familiar. By allowing something precious 
to become for me. Can I, can, I, can I say something right here? By allowing something precious to become familiar. My first thought when I, when I was uh, writing these notes down, my first thought was, you know, my, pres- my, my pastors are precious to me. And, and you know, I want to say this, Pastor, you know, the, all, all the time we were here and, and still, I never wanted that, I, I never, I always, everybody wants pastor to be their friend. Amen? I like what Dr. Barkley always said. He goes, I didn't come to be your friend. I'm here to be your pastor. Amen? But I want pastor to be my friend. And they are. They, they're our friend. Praise God. But I want them first place in my life to be my pastors. Amen? I want to be buddy-buddy. And, and uh, man, I can, use, I can use pastors to get me over here. I can use pastor's name, amen, to rub elbows with this guy over here. I never wanted anything like that. Now, now, for me, some people may be like that. I don't know. And I know there's people out there like that. I don't want to be like that. If God wants to set me up with somebody, God will set me up. Amen? Praise God. And that, that's, that's, my, that's my, I've always wanted to be humble in that area. Amen? I want God to set me up. I, mean, I don't want man to set me up. Not just because I know somebody to be able to set, be set up with them. I want God to set me up. And so, one of the things I never, ever wanted to do, I never wanted to become, uh, I, I never, ever, and, I, and pastors, I can honestly say this, that whenever you'd be up here ministering, both of you, you know, and the power of God be on you, I never one time ever go, well, that's just pastor. Or pastor would give me a word, well, that's just pastor. I'm on staff with them, work with you, know, ah, that's pastor, you know. Talk. I never, ever, I can say that honestly before the Lord, may God, what, what does uh, Mike Murdoch say? Let the, let the tongue, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. I've never got that. I hate you walk away when I talk about that. So you know what happens, you know. If it is. But I never ever wanted to get to that. I never ever wanted to get to the point to where I was familiar with the anointing on your life. Amen. I, I wanted it fresh, man. And I want to know that, that the power of God is on my pastor. They're speaking into my life and they're changing my life, Carrie and I's life. And we mean that, and still are. And and I, and I and I mean that with all my heart. And so so we never, I never. That's the one thing I said I'll never ever do. I'll never become familiar. But you know what? We've watched people become familiar with our pastors. We've watched people become. I didn't know this was going to turn into a river life message. I ain't even on my. I'm just on my little first note right there, man. There's six pages on there. <laughs> I was going, I don't know what time it is, and I just looked down, I said, well, I got a timer right there. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So that's pretty cool. But you know, you become, as a congregation, and I've said this to our congregation, the enemy would like nothing more than to slip in. And you just take a look around. I would say familiarity has stepped in. And, and, and you can just, you know, you can look and you can see that. Where are the people? Where are the people that at that one time was, you couldn't, you couldn't walk through here during praise and worship. If you didn't get down here when praise and worship started, <laughs> you just had to sit back at your seat and, and just do this number right here if you wanted to leap for joy. And so people become familiar with the anointing God. People become familiar with praise and worship. They become familiar with the songs. It wasn't coming out of the heart no more. It was coming out of their head. It was, oh, here we go again. Man. Oh, we wait on you. We wait on you. And they're rolling their eyes. Now, you think I'm kidding. Be up here leading for Matt. <laughs> Be up here leading praise and worship. I think Pastor used to use this analogy too. You ought to see your faces. You ought to see nothing, nothing more. When you're up here, man, you're you're praise God. Uh, I can't remember. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And and you got this going on out there. I oh well, somebody's not thanking God today and nobody wants to be victorious today. 
Man, shout. I mean, whenever, when it comes time, as the Lord was saying, man, shout for joy, praise God. The Bible says shout unto God with the voice of triumph. There's nothing wrong with shouting. Because I got news for you. If you want it quiet, well, then don't go to heaven. Because I got a feeling heaven's going to be a noisy place. There's going to be a lot of shouting. There's going to be a lot of Pentecostal dancing and, and all that going on up there, praise God. But one of the things that, that keeps us, that, that causes us to lose our passions become, by allowing something precious to become familiar to us, not only that is, as far as people or, or a service or your church become familiar to you, but even your walk with just forgetting where you came from. Forgetting where you could, somebody going through the same thing you did. You know, I, 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 we've got a person. <laughs> we got, and Carrie actually made the, Carrie actually said this. She said, you know why you don't, you know why you don't like this certain person? It's not that I don't like them, it's just I, you know, I aggravated with them. And that's exactly what she said. She goes, you know why you've got a problem with them? Because they were exactly like you, or like you were. And I see that. I want everybody to forgive me. I want everybody to have patience with me. But I, I can't have patience with this person. I'm forgetting where I came from. Dealing with somebody. De dealing with a, dealing with a, you know, this the other. I, and <laughs> I told Carrie the other day, I said, I'm sick of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been pastoring five years, and I'm sick of them. Oh, no, this is going on tape, and they're going to see it. <laughs> scratch that off. Tyler, scratch that off. I just love you. And I said, but, you know, I, don't, but I'm saying this, I'm being serious. I said, man, I'm getting sick of them. I said, they're not even listening to a thing I'm saying. You know, I'm trying to tell them how to get out of using the Word of God. Not me trying to tell them, but using the Word of God. God's trying to show them how to get out of a situation, and they're just going in the opposite direction. Acting like they just don't even hear it. And I'd get so angry. Well, what was happening to me? Same thing. I was forgetting where I was getting where I came from when I wanted somebody to. I wasn't getting something. And it took me a little time. <laughs> 